What is up YouTube, Salty Texas back with another bowl project. And I lost all the previous footage of me assembling this bowl blank. So here it is in its final form. All I did was take some Famo wood epoxy, put it in this uh, Betty Crocker uh, Tupperware piece, put some scrap wood, use that red oak that I had left over, and we're gonna turn it. Something special about this project, if you wait to the end, I used glow-in-the-dark pigment or pigment with this particular project. So if you want to see it glow-in-the-dark, not going to lie, it's a little disappointing, but it still makes a cool effect like you saw in the thumbnail. So got everything attached with a faceplate. You know, that's our first move ever. Everything in the casting went relatively well. There is a large divot, as you can see there in the corner of the epoxy blank, but we're going to work through it. So here we are attaching everything to the lathe. And by the way, if you've never done this, go ahead and wear gloves because that sharp edge will cut you. Anyway, so once we got it on the lathe, now we're just making everything nice and even, getting awesome shavings off this particular wood using, or this particular blank, using Famo wood epoxy yet again for this particular project. These last few projects that I've done, I went out and bought a giant gallon worth of this epoxy and look at all these cool shavings that we're getting. Make sure to wear a faceplate and a respirator because once you start turning it, it starts to burn the nostrils if you're inhaling all of that. So make sure to wear all your safety gear. And I look like Spider-Man just attacked me uh, with all those shavings that are coming off. Really cool shot, by the way, if I do say so myself. Getting a little bit better with the camera work. So the epoxy is driving really well. And you can see here that the casting wasn't even, so I've got to take off even more material, which I didn't want to do. Uh, but you have to do that if you want the bowl to be completely symmetrical. So we're going to go ahead and just have to gouge off a little bit more of that epoxy, which unfortunately will make the bowl just a sm bit smaller. So got it back on the lathe. Actually, we never took it off. And here we are just taking even more material off uh, the actual blank itself. And I didn't want to go all the way down on the bowl, even though I will a little bit, but I just wanted to focus for this particular part right on where that uh, divot is. Because if you take too much material off, it's just a waste of epoxy and it kind of defeats the purpose of putting it into one of those larger molds. So here we are, just a little bit more, trying to take off as little as possible, but yet make it to where we are obviously. Uh, in a symmetrical bowl uh, type of blank and it still won't come off so we fast forward it's still there essentially doing the same thing and yes I did throw out that particular mold because now there's a permanent divot in it I don't even know where that came from something must have happened during the uh, pressure pot process because usually that doesn't happen with that particular mold I'll just have to go to the dollar store and get another one by the way if you're ever needing Tupperware or something to put epoxy mold in uh, the dollar store the Dollar Tree usually has really good stuff for cheap that you won't mind messing up and they have a variety of sizes so once we completed that portion of it now we're just taking off the tannin or my my fault my apologies we're making the mortise I, I am surprised the amount of people that have uh, messaged me about mortise versus tannin. And I'm finally learning my lesson. Yes, we are making a mortise. And this part went particularly well. Didn't have a lot of issues. Again, using those uh, pine board waste blocks makes everything go a lot smoother. So I highly recommend using those as waste blocks if you have them available. It'll save you both epoxy and a little bit of effort when you're trying to make a mortise on the back end of your bowl blank. So there we have it. Now we got it reversed in the chuck, and we're going to start removing the faceplate waste block that is on there. And again, I like to come in from the sides of the actual bowl. Uh, I think it makes it go a little bit smoother, and I don't get a lot of chipping once uh, I do it from the side. If I come forward with the square bide carbide tool, it'll tend to catch a little bit, which drives me absolutely nuts. So here we are just uh, polishing up that edge as well, making sure everything is nice and even before we start the actual gouging process. And there I am resting the tool on top, making sure everything is nice and cylindrical. So came back, hit it with the square carbide tool yet again, and now we're just using the regular bowl gouge to take off all this excess material that we don't need. And the middle portion of it went relatively well because I had those pine board waste blocks uh, in there. 
but the sides gave me a little bit of issue. Had to go back and resharpen my uh, bowl gouge there because I wasn't getting as much material off as I wanted to initially. But the middle portion went relatively well, and I didn't. I did another bowl that was similar to this, and I wanted very thin walls on this particular project, so I had to come back hit it with both the bowl gouge, the square, and round carbide tool to get the actual finish that I was really looking for on this particular project. And here we are just a little bit later in the project getting down to the absolute bottom of the depth of the bowl that we wanted again you want to be a little bit more careful once you start gouging out the middle because what you don't want to do is go through the actual mortise itself because that will totally ruin your project and I don't want to have to deal with that so then I took a smaller carbide tool and I'm just really working the edges there the larger carbide tool or the larger bowl gouge uh, wasn't exactly hitting the sides of the bottom that I wanted to and I didn't really want to leave a lip on this one So the bottom portion of the bowl is very square and here I am using that square carbide tool to really get that nice uh, Thin finish on the bottom so in our typical salty Texas fashion Sanding all the way from 340 up to 1500 initially and then coming back and hitting it with the micro mesh And I typically won't show sanding But yes, we do do that and if you want your bowl to look absolutely amazing You have to spend a lot of time sanding unfortunately and I apologize in the meantime for that shoddy camera work But check out that transition so then we hit it with the micro mesh and now we're just getting everything nice and polished that nice translucent bowl uh, that we typically love to see on this channel that's what i like to see so here we are hitting it with that wood wax absolutely gorgeous one of these days i will get some yorkshire grit and maybe even some shell wax and become a real professional but until the meantime this wood wax that i get from home depot works just as well and here we are just finishing polishing everything up and here is the end product uh, you can see there's a little bit of cloudiness and that's not because of the sanding that's the actual pigment itself and this is glow in the dark pigment like I stated earlier and you'll see here in just a bit it does glow in the dark however you have to hit it with a lot of UV light for it to really get that nice uh, kind of glow color so it's a bit of a novelty but here it is. I hit it with a not with a, a UV black light that I have, and it will glow a little bit. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of light in the background, but overall, it will kind of sort of glow, and it looks cool. And I haven't done a glowing bowl in a long time, so hope you guys enjoyed the project. Hope it was worth your time. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, share it, and I'll see you guys in the next project. Peace. All right, so project is done. Not bad. Not a lot of problems. Another cool little scrappy little bowl that glows in the dark. So it's not translucent obviously because I used that glow powder as you probably didn't see because I lost the footage. Uh, but it does glow in the dark which is kind of cool so it gives the bowl a little bit more unique type of, I don't know, kind of presentation. But it looks really cool. Scrappy. Little, little bowl. Nothing too exciting other than it glows in the dark. Uh, today is November 8th. You guys are probably going to see this in April or May. Uh, but fun little project, getting all these reps in. So hope you guys enjoyed the project, a little something different. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next project. All right, bye.